If you're working with drawings frequently, not only are you going to want to customize your drawing template, but you're also going to want to customize the sheet format that you see at the bottom of the sheet. To edit that sheet format, you can right click in and say edit sheet format. And any of these lines are editable. So if I want to delete a few of these out or make modifications, you can draw in lines. And you'll see if you exit out of the edit sheet format that that now has become part of the sheet format. I'll go back in, edit it again, and delete that out. By default, this comes with this propriety and confidential setup with some information in this note. You could come in, edit it if you want to leave it as is. And simply just change whatever text is in there or more likely you can simply just delete this out and create your own note whatever size that you want in this case I don't need any of that so I'll go ahead and just delete all of that out the next thing I want to do is add a picture to the top box here and I'm going to go ahead and shift down the title and that line in order to give myself room. And I'll go ahead and go into Insert and choose Picture. And within the Drawings folder, there's a SolidWise JPEG. I'll go ahead and open that up. Scale this down and drag it in. By default, the name of the document is going in the DWG number area. That's something we can also change if we want. I can say Edit Sheet Format once again. And I'm going to go ahead and edit this note just by double clicking in the center. And I'm going to link it to a property. And since we have a model added, I'll go ahead and choose the model in view specified in sheet properties. And I'm going to set that as file name. And by default, this is DWG number. This is referring to the name of the sheet, or the name of the drawing, rather. That may or may not be useful for you. One thing you can also do is come in and add a custom property. Once again, I have a part number set up within the drawing views file. So I can modify this to link to the part number. And I can change this to part number as well. But that all comes down to what information you want to display within the sheet format. Now if I look at the properties of the view, I can also change the configuration and have a reference to the configuration within the title block. So I'll do that as well. Once again, edit the sheet format. I'm going to go ahead and delete out this parting line, come into the Annotation tab, choose Note, and I'm going to turn the leader off by choosing that No Leader option. And I'll zoom in a bit so this is easier to place. And all of the fonts and font sizes can be modified from within editing the sheet format just by double clicking on any of these notes. And we're going to go
go ahead and add a second note. To the bottom and we're going to link this to the model view and set it as configuration name. Once we're done with that, I can position this where I want and exit the edit sheet format. And whenever I change the configuration, if I change this to default, it'll update the configuration name. Now if I go back into the part, I have a custom property of a part number defined. If I update this, and go back in the drawing, that part number is now going to update. And if you have different revisions of your part, you can either enter this in manually or you can create a custom property within the part and have it link to that custom property. Lastly, if we edit the, or rather than editing the sheet format, there's an option to define title block. And we can click on any of these boxes to allow editing within the drawing. So I'm going to leave the revision unchecked. And material and finish, if you hover over, you'll notice the PRP sheet finish. And you'll notice the note below this. PRP sheet material. So if I leave this unchecked, it's going to automatically populate the material and the finish. So these are generally two things you can leave alone. But I'll go ahead and click out all these boxes. And that motion that you saw was this just updating each one of those individual boxes. So now I'd say that my sheet format is pretty much set. I can come in and save it out. So if I go to File, Save Sheet Format, I'm going to call this A Landscape and just put Custom on the end. Or I could add solid wise and click save now once I'm actually creating the drawing or working with the drawing because I decided to do this manually I can come in say this was drawn up by me say on the 12th of January and maybe this was checked by my business partner on another date. But if you don't define the title block, that's something you can link directly to custom properties. If you do want to define this yourself, once again, it's just that edit title block and click in any of those checked boxes to allow them to be edited. The last thing I'll do is create a new drawing with the new format. And I'll just browse in and grab that A landscape solid wise. Click OK. And I'll go ahead and open up the machine bracket. And I'm going to come back in and just insert a single view of the machine bracket. And you'll see now that title populates, shows the configuration. 
And if I go into the part and define several properties, you can do the part number. The finish, maybe it's polished. And I've already associated a material. So if I go into that machine bracket sheet, we see the polished is populated. And right now that material is linking to the custom properties. But if I wanted to change that, I can come in, edit the sheet format, and in this case I've made that note disappear, so I could just add my own annotation if I want, link this to the model. and I could just set the material manually if I want. But from that you should get the picture on how to edit the sheet format and how to work with it. You might notice that once in a while you'll get a few issues between uh, note conflicts and you'll just have to delete something out as it shows up or modify the sheet format as needed. But that's how you customize the sheet format for your own needs.